here in Indianapolis. Call this last Sunday of November, Showdown Sunday. It's the 9-2 New England Patriots and the 9-2 Indianapolis Colts. And welcome to the RCA Dome, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Phil Simms. What else do you need to say about this game? The Patriots, the leaders of the AFC East, the Colts tied for the lead in the AFC South. Phil, your Chevrolet keys to this game. Well, my key for the New England Patriots and their key to don't give up the big play, stay back, don't let, let Peyton Manning throw the football down the field. On the other side, it's Manning versus Belichick. Who's going to figure the other one out? Whoever wins that battle is going to give their team a chance to win. The Patriots are riding a seven-game winning streak. Can Manning and the Colts bring it to a halt? We'll come back after this word from your local station. RCA Dome in Indianapolis. Two of the best teams in football collide as the Colts host the New England Patriots. Innovative and imaginative are just two of the many ways Patriots coach Bill Belichick's defensive talents have been described. He'll need all of them today to put the clams on the Colts Peyton Manning and the best aerial attack in the NFL. The kickoff from Indianapolis is next. Subway presents Fresh Starts. A glance at teams looking to turn heads this season. Subway, eat fresh. The Titans have been tyrants on defense this year, especially against the run. Carlos Hall, Keith Bullock, and Javon Kurz are just a few members of the NFL's top-ranked run defense, a unit that's allowed an average of 74 yards rushing per game and is a main reason for the Titans' success. That's what it's all about, baby. I'm a justice for the appellate court. I recently heard a case in which the plaintiff filed suit against an organization for liabilities incurred by an affiliate. I couldn't render a clear-cut ruling, so I asked myself, what would Jared do? I'm not a lawyer, but I do know that third-party immunity does not extend to affiliations where an initial agreements were set under prima facie law. I would therefore rule for the plaintiff. Then I'd order a sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Hmm. The sweet onion chicken teriyaki sub from Subway. Eat fresh. A look at the AFC East, the New England Patriots with a 9-2 and two record ahead of the Miami Dolphins who won on Thanksgiving Day. Meanwhile, in the AFC South, Indianapolis and Tennessee are right up there at 9-2. and two. The loser of this game takes a giant step backwards in the battle for a first-round bye. Bill Belichick, the head coach of the New England Patriots, once again doing a tremendous job, especially with the injuries that have hit the Patriots. And for the home team, Tony Dungy in his second season as the head coach of these Indianapolis Colts. Greg Gumbel along with Phil Sims and Armin Katayan. Glad you've joined us here in Indy for what should be a terrific game. Unless, of course, you disagree, Mr. Sims. No, for once I do agree with you, Greg. It will be a terrific game. Remember, there's a history with these two football teams. They both used to be in the AFC East, so they're familiar with each other. That's why I think it's going to be exciting. Then along with, of course, they're both 9-2. and two. The New England Patriots had lost 11 straight coin tosses before having won this one to take the opening kick. Vanderjack kicked were underway. Coming down and hitting the Patriot just inside the 20-yard line and a scramble for the ball. That was Bethel Johnson. And the Patriots eventually cover the ball. Onto the field comes Tom Brady. Last week threw for a season high 368 yards in the overtime win against the Houston Texans. The offensive line. Patriots have a rookie right in the middle of it in center Dan Copen. And with Troy Brown out today, much of the receiving load will fall to number 83, Dion Branch.
Brady to throw and on first down he hits the tight end Christian Fourier. Let's check the Indy defense and defensive end Dwight Freeney. Nine sacks. He's quick. He's an absolute terror for opposing quarterbacks. Number 50, David Thornton, is a tackling machine at linebacker. He joins Washington and Morris. And Tom Brady will test a secondary that has two rookie safeties in second rounder Mike Doss and third rounder Donald Strickland. Brady to throw again. Flips it out for Falk. First down, 40, and across the 40 to about the 41-yard line before David Thornton makes the stop. Well, when you talk about this New England Patriots offense, they do a little bit of everything. That's why it makes it hard to prepare for them. One week, they throw a lot of screens. That's what they call a read screen. Tom Brady looks down the field to throw it. You cover the receiver. Okay, if he covered, throw it to the back. There's a guard out in front. There's Charlie Weiss, the offensive coordinator. Falk and Patrick pass in the backfield to give us to Falk. Trying the left side, and there's not much there. Brought down by Mike Doss coming up from the secondary. It'll be second and nine. You know, you talk about this New England offense too, Greg. They mix it up. I, I kind of got lost in my train of thought. One week they throw a lot of short passes. Then you see them like a Monday night football against the Denver Broncos, and they're throwing a lot of bombs. So. Tony Dungy says that's what's difficult about defensing them. It's a different bag of tricks every week. Graham and Fourier, the two tight ends for the Patriots. Quick pass out here to Branch. And Branch, 45 midfield and into Indianapolis territory. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line of the Colts. Mike Doss pushed him out. And, of course, they would like to put pressure on the corners. This time it's Walt Harris. He is way off the receiver, Dion Branch. Look at the separation. Now, you're talking about trying to tackle in open space. You're giving Dion Branch two ways to go. That's really tough for a corner to make a tackle on a talented wide receiver. Tom Brady sounding very confident when we talked to him last night. He says, you watch this Colt defense. They really don't change very much, so nothing unexpected from them. Going to give to Falk. And Falk will get to about the 42 and a half yard line and Doss very active early on with yet another tackle. Yes he is he's up there but too you talk again one more thought about the offense. What did Bill Belichick say last night. I am not going to or we don't want to let Dwight Freeney ruin our game. So we got to make sure when you look at this Colts defense Dwight Freeney is the guy you must do whatever it takes to make sure you block him so you have a chance to perform at the other positions. On second and eight, Brady with five wide receivers. Quick drop, quick pass to Fourier to about the 35-yard line, and he'll be about a yard shy of a first down. One of the spots you like to throw the football against the Indianapolis Colts defense, short and over the middle. Tony Dungy, that's the way he coaches his defense. There's Dwight Freeney. And you know what that tells Dwight Freeney? You're a star. And when you become a star in the National Football League, or when people worry about you, you get special attention. That means double team. Brady, four out of four for 37 yards. Cloud comes alive. Mike Cloud in the backfield. The give is to Cloud, and Cloud has a first down to about the 31, close to the 30-yard line. Josh Williams, David Thornton with the tackle, but it's a New England first down. Kevin Falk starts the game at halfback. Mike Cloud this week. Instead of Antoine Smith backing him up and the big reason it's got to be you're on AstroTurf you're indoors you're going against a fast defense so you want fast runners Dwight Freeney comes inside good block by Daniel Graham the tight end and they ran where he wasn't fought the lone back behind Brady eighth play of this drive and it's fought this time he has stood up at the line of scrimmage maybe even a yard deeper than that by Larry Triplett number 75 the second year man out of the University of Washington. Now we talked to Tony Dungy too on Friday and we just asked him some questions and what's the key for your defense and well he says first it is a bag of tricks by this offense. They do a lot of formations. They they try to fool you so he thought the big key for him two rookies Donald Strickland and Mike Doss stay in position recognize formations and don't get fooled. Those two safeties are very deep. Fourier in 
motion. Brady. Down. Dwight Freeney. Freeney coming around the corner doing just what Bill Belichick said he didn't want him to do. You know, you can plan and you can strategize and you can double team, but sooner or later, you got to block him one on one and the speed. I can honestly say, or be careful to the that Dwight Freeney might be the fastest guy on the football field today. That's a defensive end. That's how fast he is. And when you watch him on film, you might think one thing, but when you see him in person, it's different. Play clock winding down. Three, two, one. Brady gets it off. Here comes Freeney. Hit him as he threw. This is Branch coming across the field. 30 and out of bounds, short of the 25 yard line. That will be short of a first down. So, Greg, what we're trying to tell everybody at home, if you haven't watched the Indianapolis Colts this year, we're not overstating our case about Dwight Freeney. It is, he is as good as there can be rushing from the outside at home on AstroTurf. He's terrific. Adam Vinatieri will get this one away from 43 yards out. Ken Walter will hold. way and is good 904 to play first quarter Brady drives the Patriots to a field goal Tom Brady felt the heat from Dwight Freeney on that drive but was still a perfect five out of five for 50 yards New England with a three nothing lead Tom Brady asked this last night you know Ed Dwight Freeney's pretty good isn't he uh, yeah we couldn't we couldn't bring ourselves to lie to him <laughs> I want to go. Yeah, you'll find, you'll out. find out. Minitary's kick. This is Terrence Wilkins. And Wilkins at the seven. Tripped up and goes down at about the 16 yard line. Peyton Manning onto the field. First possession for the Colts right after this. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-new 270 horsepower Acura TL, a higher form of performance. Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood. Applebee's. And by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Just under nine minutes to play here in the first quarter, and Peyton Manning having the best seasons in various categories as he has had in his career. And he gives right off the bat to Edward James, and James is going to be smothered after about a yard or two gain. Willie McGinnis with the stop. It'll be second and nine. The offensive line for the Colts, McCoy Freitas makes his fourth straight start at left tackle for injured Tarek Glenn. Edron James has found his groove. The Colts all-time leading rusher is again piling up yardage as Peyton Manning and the Colts go with the no huddle and Manning runs that so well on second and nine with throw. Throwing Marcus Pollard across the 30 to the 33 yard line and a first down. A quick look at the New England defense. The 3 4 Richard Seymour leads the defensive front with five and a half sacks. The four linebackers Teddy Bruschi having an outstanding week in and week out. And Ty Law has four of the 12 interceptions made by the starters in the secondary. Manning to work right away. James. And James to the 35. It'll be second and eight. Well, Greg, you talked about it. The no huddle offense. The Colts, Peyton Manning, loves this, of course. They want to do it for a lot of reasons. But the biggest reasons are to keep the New England defense from substituting, which they love to do. They have a lot of players. And also, maybe it'll stop New England from doing all those different blitzes, which they love to do to most quarterbacks around the league. On second and eight, penalty markers fly. Pass to Dallas Clark is complete over the middle out to the 45, and that'll be enough for a first down. It appeared Bobby Hamilton jumped. And if so, the Colts will deny it and take the play. Offside. 
number 91 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. You look at the offside, Bobby Hamilton. Hard count by Peyton Manning. I say this all the time, quarterbacks don't do it enough. They don't keep the defense on edge. He takes advantage of it because he wants the defense to play their hand. Show what they're going to do before the snap. Play fake. Manning with time. And now throws complete to James. And James out to midfield and just nosing across the midfield line and into New England territory. There's Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator. There he is. Tom's been pacing the field for about four hours, thinking about what he's going to call today. Going over the game in his mind, and that mind's been working this year. This offense is efficient. It's very talented. It's a different offense than New England has seen in the past because they have so many good weapons. Edward Jane cut down. Back at the 46-yard line, Ted Johnson coming up to make the stop. Really good job by Ted Johnson. So hard to recognize when it's a run and when it's going to be a play action pass by Peyton Manning. But Ted Johnson sees that it's going to be the stretch play, gets way outside to stop Edron James and makes a big tackle for a loss. Manning making some adjustments now at the line of scrimmage. And New England has not substituted on defense, so they're getting what they want. Third and nine. Pressure. Now moving, looking, throwing downfield. Dallas Clark, and he's got it. Penalty marker is down, and Clark is inside the 20 yard line. That's because it's going to be legal touching. I, I would think he ran out of bounds and came back in to catch it, and that's what it's going to be. Illegal touching of a pass. Number 44 offense. Player went out of bounds, came back in, was the first to touch. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. That's what it is. Unless you're forced out illegally, you cannot be the first one to touch the ball when it comes down. No, Dallas Clark's coming out of the backfield. I'm sorry. But watch as he goes down the field. He gets knocked out. Legally, he's way out of bounds. Then he's the first guy to touch the football when he comes back in. So a 36-yard pickup is nullified. The ball moves back to the 41 of the Colts and it's third and 14. See what the Indianapolis has picked it up on third down the last couple of games. James and Dominique Rhodes in the backfield. You should when you have all these guys these weapons on offense. Manning running out of time and goes down lost the football picked off by the New England Patriots. Dan Klecko with the recovery and it's New England ball. Pepper Johnson linebacker coach. He's excited because one of his linebackers Mike Vrabel comes in makes the hit. What the reason why look Peyton Manning looking down the field New England all over the receivers nobody open. He gets hit when he's not expecting it. And Dan Klecko makes the recovery of the fumble. It has been more than a year since Peyton Manning has lost a fumble. November 24th of last season, the last time Manning lost a fumble. Five wide receivers for Brady and the Patriots. Let's see if they look to capitalize right away. It has to be a quick pass because of Dwight Freenius. That's what I would think. Quick pass is complete. And Dion Branch close to the 30 yard line. Now I know when you play the Patriots, you just talking about Peyton Manning, you just see some different things on defense. That's what he saw. That's what made him hold the football a little longer. And Greg, that's why he lost that fumble. That's that is a tremendous stat for a quarterback. It tells you he gets rid of the football, he knows what he's doing, but more importantly, he keeps both hands on it. Second and five, Kevin Falk. And Falk nowhere to go. It'll be third and five. You know, I, I don't want to get on this too much, but it's it's not too often you get to watch matchups like this. Look at Dwight Freeney. Daniel Graham, the tight end. That's a tough matchup, but this guy, can he keep this pace up for the whole game is what I want to know. 
I'm sure Tom Brady wants to know it too. <laughs> Tyree Mount. Once again, the Colt fans to their feet. And now, Indiana, I mean, the Patriots have a tight end up on the side of Dwight Freeney. Two tight ends. Brady steps up, throws outside, complete the fall. Falk inside the 20 to the 15 out of bounds, first down. Well, that's, that's terrific game planning. It really is. Know the trouble spot. Take care of that first. That's number 93. Two tight ends to the side of Dwight Freeney. Now Tom Brady gets a little bit time to throw, and he finds the open receiver, Kevin Falk, for the first down. There's Dwight Freeney. Doesn't get there in time. And Tom Brady told us last night, we have not been executing well in the red zone. They've worked on it. We'll see what happens. Brady throwing far side. That's complete and out of bounds to Deion Branch. Beautiful. Really terrific execution. And it all goes to the quarterback just being taught right, knowing how to do, to do it right. And he throws it right on time. And look where he puts it. The defense inside looking at the quarterback. Nobody protecting the sideline. And another thing, just another part of offense that NFL teams don't do enough of. Outside to the sideline throws. Brady, eight out of eight for 79 yards. Quick pass to the outside. And David Givens looking for a first down. And is awfully close. Appears to have it. What do you mean appears? Usually you're jumping out there, can't wait to say it. <laughs> it's been a long week, so you get a little cautious. Well, look at the start by Tom Brady, nine for nine. Those are the troubles the Patriots have been having in the red zone. This is Mike Cloud, left side, trucks into the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> well, Tony Goji said it, not that that was a trick. But New England is just showing everything. A lot of different plays, styles. And when you do that against a defense like Indianapolis, which is built for speed and to run, when you show them a lot, you get them thinking. They react to what you're doing instead of attacking you. And that's when you have success. Cloud with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And the Patriots capitalize on the Manning fumble. Vinatieri. The extra point is good. 2.32 to play. And we have a penalty on the field. So we'll hear from Bill Levy again. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 88 offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the try. Well, Bill Levy's looking uh, trim. He didn't know read Thanksgiving. Should have hung around us. Well, uh, not a uh, really just Greg. <laughs> See, that's how those rumors get started. I know. Well, that's what I'm here for. So we'll back it up, and Vinatieri will try it again. <laughs> Snap is good. Kick is good. 2:32 on the clock. First quarter. A field goal and a touchdown. Mike Cloud into the end zone. Patriots lead it 10 0. We'll have the kickoff after this. With the fumble recovery, the Patriots only had to go 36 yards to pay dirt, and they lead it 10 0. Vinatieri set to kick it again. Terrence Wilkins stands inside his own five. And it's gotten kind of quiet here in the RCA Dome. from the three and gets up ahead of steam 25 and tripped up at the 28 yard line number 39 Sean Mayer the rookie out of Penn State made a saving tackle 26 yard return Peyton back to work after this the NFL on CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile get more minutes more features more service and by Black & Decker's new Gel Max Comfort Grip Tools, specifically designed to feel good in your hands. 
You know, you can follow the playoff race with our exclusive projected seeds, brackets, and all of the playoff scenarios. Just click on playoff race at cbssportsline.com. Colts get started from their own 28-yard line, down 10-0. Stretch to the right, Edwin James cuts it back and up to about the 30, just across to the the 30-yard line, and we check in with Armin Katayan. Armin, Greg, you know at eight, at nine and two, the Super Bowl Express for New England was picking up steam until Bill Belichick and his own inimitable style kind of slammed on the brakes in the team meeting this week. He told his players, "You want to be compared to that 2001 Super Bowl team? Okay, how many games did they win after Thanksgiving? Nine. How many have you won? Zero. That was the challenge to them, and they've responded to it pretty well so far, Greg. Back so to you. So far, so good, Armin. Thank you. Quick pass, and that's Reggie Wayne. And Wayne to about the 35-yard line. Manning now four out of four. Brady nine out of nine. And by the time the football has hit the ground is when Manning fumbled. Uh, it just tells you about both these teams. Even though Peyton Manning's in a no-huddle offense right now, when you saw the field, you saw all the defenders coming on for New England. So... This allows them to match up better, to get more speed, and to create more looks for Peyton Manning to look at. Third and three, and Manning will work from the shotgun. Manning with a pass, and that's incomplete. First incompletion of the day on either side, intended for Troy Walters. And the punting unit will come on. Well, that's an awfully tough throw for Peyton Manning. The defense playing the receivers properly inside goes out. But a nice job on the outside. Ty Law. Watch Ty Law come into the picture here at the end. That's and a catchable I, ball. Well, it's catchable. But also, you got to go down and protect yourself if you're Troy Walters because you see Ty Law in front of you. Tyrone Poole is deep for the punt. Offense is so much about rhythm. The Colts not into it yet. Good kick from Hunter Smith. Poole at the 24. Trying to turn the corner and is buried at about the 27-yard line. Cliff Crosby, number 31, with the special team stop. 41-yard punt, four-yard return. We have under a minute to play here in the first quarter. New England by 10. Hey, Monday on the Late Show, Dave goes one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Howard Stern. And later this week, don't miss George Clooney, Keanu Reeves, and Halle Berry all this week here on CBS. Brady to throw on first down. Flips it out to the near side. That's complete to Patrick Pass. And Pass fights off tacklers. Bulls across the 30 to about the 32. Pick up a five on the play. Makes it second and five. Well, again, just a different look by the New England Patriots. Now the Indianapolis Colts, the defense, you should be in rhythm with what you think they're going to do on offense. You have seen a lot of different looks. Now you should react faster and play better. Complete across the 40 to about the 43 yard line, and that'll be a first down. Bethel Johnson on the receiving end. And the final seconds will wind down here in the first quarter, and the teams will change in. That's the end of the first quarter here in Indianapolis. It's New England 10, and the Colts nothing. We'll go back to the RCA Dome right after this. You're watching the NFL on CBS. As we welcome you back to Indianapolis to look at Tom Brady's numbers, which are only outstanding so far. From the first 15 minutes, 11 out of 11 for 98 yards. We start the second quarter, and he's going to throw it again. Over the middle. Short pop is complete. Kevin Falk. Run out of bounds just as he crosses midfield and pushed out by Nick Harper. Well, it's a pickup of about eight, and it'll be second and two. You know, we haven't seen yet from Brady and the Patriots. Tom talked to us last night about how they use deep routes as a little bit of a decoy, but now they're beginning to look at those routes as his first option, but he hasn't, he hasn't done any of that yet today. Not yet. I think what they do, Greg, they try to break you down a little. They 
They get into the rhythm of the game is what they're doing. They're doing smart, safe plays. They're well schemed. That's why the receivers are open. But as the game goes along, they're going to try to take advantage of the rookie safeties of the Indianapolis Colts. On second and two, Kevin Falk up the head, up ahead for a first down New England. We go to New York and Jim Nance. Jim. All right, how about those Cincinnati Bengals looking for a four-game winning streak? And it's John Kitna here against the Steelers. And coming out of the pocket, finding a wide open Kelly Washington, the rookie from Tennessee, will find the end zone. 7-0 Cincinnati back to Greg and Phil. Cincinnati in a dogfight with Baltimore atop the AFC North. You just can't say enough about the job Marvin Lewis has done in Bengal land. Oh, Brady going to go deep. Deion Branch, and it's out of bounds. The blitz by the Indianapolis Colts. It was Donald Strickland on the blitz, number 30, and the running back. I didn't see which running back was in the backfield. Kevin Falk just makes a tremendous block. And Tom Brady looking deep to throw it. Look to the top of your screen. Watch the block. Oh, excuse me. Brady has time. Does not throw a good football, but it doesn't matter. The receiver was covered. Brady now 12 out of 13 throwing. Give it to Falk. Falk, big hole up the middle. Inside the 35. And appears to have enough for a first down. Well, uh, listen. It, the, the tone has been set. You got to figure it out. The safe passes. When in doubt, they're going to run it. It's the draws. And look what's happening. The Colts are going outside. They get to go to the outside. Nobody in the middle because they're too worried about getting to the quarterback with the pass rush. And if Kevin Falk is not hit by the umpire, it's going to be a really big game. New England has had the football twice as long. Brady to throw. Good pass over the middle, and that's inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And Christian Fourier with the catch. You know what, Greg? You and I have really got to start taking to heart what people tell us. So, Jay Fiedler, they told us before the night before the Thanksgiving Day game, we're going to throw it, we're going to have success. And Tom Brady says, look, we he's not did you know say anything bad about the Colts defense but we should have success it's their force we just got to be execute somewhat good and so far they've been terrific here's cloud and cloud is hit and thrown back at the 31 yard line by Nick Harper coming up from the cornerback slot that's a loss of three and it'll be third and seven now I think running wide on the Colts defense is the one of the worst things you can do we talked about it indoors on AstroTurf very fast surface and your defense if it has one quality it can run Colts fans come alive again as the defense tries to make a stand here at third and seven Brady needs the 24 for a first down there's a tight end on Dwight Freeney's side again slows him down Brady with time throws complete to the five Dedrick Ward, newly signed, his first touchdown of the season. What a shot. Perfect throw, good route. Tom Brady talked about Dedrick Ward, says, wow, what a neat guy for us to pick up from the outside coming in. But watch the bad angle. He catches it. The safety over playing allows the catch, then the touchdown. Safeties are what they should be. Safeties protect. And when you overcommit, you turn in, make average plays turn into big ones. Jim Terry's kick is good. 11.54 to play, first half. And if you're on the Indianapolis sideline, nobody's thinking of giving up, but I'm sure a few, more than a few, are going, uh oh. Dedrick Ward, 31-yard touchdown catch. Patriots on top, 17 to nothing. And Vinatieri kicks to Wilkins. A yard deep in the end zone. 20. Close to the 25-yard line. 
Thursday on Survivor. Three episodes left. Critics say this is the most surprising season yet. And now, with the fight to make the final four, immunity is crucial. Survivor returns all new on its regular night, Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. All right, now you're the Colts offense. It, uh, it's easy to say, hard to do, but you've got to wipe your mind. It's not 17 to nothing. You've got to be extremely patient. They talk about that's the difference in their offense this year. They are patient. They're going to have to show it right now. Manning play fakes up the middle, throws out here to Clark, and Clark forward to about the 33-yard line, and that ball is down on the ground. But what a hit, and Clark is hurt. Ty Law came up and hit him low, and Clark went flying. Yes, he did. The right foot or ankle in that area, but Dallas Clark, they're in zone. He comes up and hits him. I shouldn't even said that. I, well, I don't know, but I saw him grab his right ankle after he hits the ground. And he rolls it right, as you can see, right there. Well, they'll tend to Dallas Clark. We'll take a timeout. 11.38 to play. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. UPS, what can Brown do for you? And by Something's Gotta Give, starring Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton in theaters December 12th. Back at the RCA Dome, the Indianapolis Colts have such high hopes for this young man. Dallas Clark, the first-round draft choice out of Iowa. When he hits the ground, you can see his right leg. The twisting, he gets hit in the air, too. That had to hurt, but when he came down, he came down on his ankle, his foot. It was all in a bad position. And gets twisted underneath. Right there. Oof. So they've brought the stretcher out for Dallas Clark. We'll take another timeout. We'll be back after this. Armin Katayan back here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. As you can see right behind me, they are just placing Dallas Clark onto a stretcher to take him off the field. Greg, they've placed that injured right leg into an air cast. They've pumped it full of air. They're being obviously very, very careful with Dallas as they take him off the field. And as soon as I get some updated information, I will pass it on to you and Phil. Back to you. Armin, thanks. So Dallas Clark gets a hand from the fans here. And a standing ovation from the fans in the corner of the field as he is wheeled off. So now the Colts will have to deal with the loss of Dallas Clark. Jodine Davenport will replace him. Marvin Harrison yet to make a catch for the Colts. Second and two, and the Patriots' safeties are rotating. Gives to James. James gets first down yardage out to the 38 or 39 yard line. Roman Pfeiffer with the stop and a much needed first down for Tony Dungy and the Colts. Well, Greg, you said it. The safety's rotating. What they're doing, they're trying to confuse Peyton Manning. And you look at the safeties, they walk up, but every single time and every play of this game, before the ball is snapped, they're deep. Real deep. Manning. Dodging, throws. Marvin Harrison, his first catch of the day. And he's wrapped up at about the 43-yard line. And you know, let's go back to you talk about those safeties. Patience is their word, too. We talked to Rodney Harrison last night, and he says, look, no big plays. Stay back. And he said he had so much trouble during the week trying to decide if the quarterback had the ball, didn't have the ball because of Peyton Manning's play action fakes. He says, I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm staying back. And Eugene Wilson, the other safety, I said to him, if you get confused, just get back. Stay back. So that's the... That is the word. Kendrick James tries the left side and not much there. Roman Pfeiffer again with a stop for no gain, and it'll be third and six. 
so hard to run the football outside against the Patriots. One, they're a big team uh, defensively, especially when Ted Washington's in there. But they teach their defenders, there's Romeo Cornell, the defensive coordinator, to go against the offensive linemen and be ready to go either way. And when you play that technique, it's harder to get those big gaping holes to run into. Patriots have put the clamps on Edron James. Six carries for just eight yards so far today. Manning from the shotgun. Hard count got them to jump. This pass is complete to Troy Walters. Walters inside the 35, lost the football. Rodney Harrison has it. Back to the 35, and he goes down. Peyton Manning is saying, don't worry about it. This is offside New England. Well, what he's saying, hold on to the football because we had a chance for a big play. Offside. Number 93 defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. Peyton Manning again using the snap count. Willie McGinnis was offside too, but the defense, because of good protection, opens up a hole down the field. And Troy Walters fumbles the ball instead of a big first down and just wiping out the penalty. Now it's going to be third, third down in about a half a yard. Those two safeties combined. Eugene Wilson stripped it. Rodney Harrison recovered it. It's all for naught. It's a first down for the Colts at their own 48 yard line. Or rather, make it a third and one, excuse me. James and Mungro in the backfield. There's a good shot, third and one. You can still see the safety deep. No first down here. Who's at the bottom of that pile? Ted Washington and Bobby Hamilton get up. Ted Washington, just the immovable force when it comes to inside. And then when you go wide against that defense, I told you, it's hard too. Phil, we passed Ted Washington in the lobby last night as we were leaving the Patriots Hotel. He's listed at 365 pounds, and I thought, that's a lot. Yeah, that's right. He's bigger than that. I thought about giving him a forearm to the back, but he probably wouldn't have known it, so I just let him go. Smith kicks it away. Penalty marker down where he hits the turf. They're going to let it roll inside the five, and they're going to down it at about the three-yard line. Mike Vrabel and Hamilton and Klecko all in on the punter. It's going to result in a first down for the Colts. A couple offsides penalties. The Patriots defense has gotten away with them. Now running into the kicker gives the Colts a first down. This is tempting a little bit of fade here because you know the odds are that Peyton Manning is going to get something going at some point. Well, mistakes like this, Greg, almost always lead to points by the offense. Mike Vrabel is on the ground and Bobby Hamilton runs into the kicker and Dan Klecko's there with him. First time today the Colts have been in Patriot territory. They're at the 47. throws Marvin Harrison middle of the field inside the 30 to the 27 or 28 yard line. You give Peyton Manning long enough and the zones every play has been a zone by this Patriots defense but the zone will spread out and when it spreads out it creates more holes and spaces for the receivers and Manning to throw to. 20-yard pickup, first down at the 27. Manning flips out here to Edwin James. One-on-one -on -one with Ty Law, and he dives to the 22. Teddy Bruschi, Roman Pfeiffer with the stop. It'll be second and five. It was, it was interesting hearing Peyton Manning talk about his, his past duels with Bill Belichick. He said, in all, as a head coach and as a coordinator, he said, I've gone four and four with him. I've won pretty ugly, I've lost pretty, and I've lost ugly. Yeah. Well, what's amazing, he knew this. He knew his record, and it's it's a little battle. He wants a piece of Bill Belichick, of course. On second and five, Manning going to lob for Harrison in the end zone. Did he get there? It is ruled incomplete and out of the end zone.
Peyton Manning, they have the play set up. It's perfect. Marvin Harrison makes the move on the safety. Eugene Wilson, what's the order of the day, Greg? Don't come up. He cannot get his feet down and secure the catch, but Eugene Wilson goes for the fake, the pump by Peyton Manning. The throw is long because Manning was avoiding pressure. He steps up, and when quarterbacks step up, they have a tendency to throw the football a little farther. Well, I'll tell you what, that'll, that'll put Eugene Wilson back a little more. Play clock running down. Manning calls timeout. The Colts burn their first timeout here in the second half. They're down 17. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. And by Nextel Coast to Coast Walkie Talkie. Nextel, done. Hey, coming up, the Nextel halftime report. That soft spoken, quiet, unopinionated group in New York. Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer have today's scores and highlights all on the Nextel halftime report. Did you just call them soft? Soft spoken. Oh, I'm sorry. Indy come up empty on third down so far today. Manning going to lob for Edger and James off his fingertips incomplete. Vrabel covering down the sideline and that'll bring Mike Vanderjat onto the field. That is the first time today that the New England defense has varied from what they've done. So that time they blitzed Teddy Bruschi. They played man-to-man -man coverage and Romeo Cornell on a big third and five says, okay, let's don't let Peyton Manning get in a rut. They show him something different. Incomplete pass. You see there, Vanderjat has hit 30 consecutive field goals. 26 for 26 this year. This one from 40 yards out. On its way. Looks good. And the Colts are on the board. 7.04 to play. First half, Vanderjat. Breaks the ice. 17 3, New England. A great night of television. CBS Monday begins with Yes, Dear, and Still Standing, and then the Emmy Award winning Best Comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond, and the new hit comedy, Two and a Half Men, followed by Monday's number one drama, CSI Miami, plus the late show with David Letterman. Monday, here on CBS, America's most watched network. Vanderjat now has hit 31 consecutive field goals. That ties Fouad Rouvais for the second most all-time in a row. Gary Anderson holds the record at 40 straight. You know everything. It's Keish, you were wondering. Vanderjat's kick. From the seven, it's Patrick Pass. 25 and forward to about the 28 or the 29 yard line and here comes Dwight Freeney he has been a busy man and he has drawn some attention from the opposition today well when he doesn't get attention first they put the tight end to his side but when he is single block he gets right to Tom Brady tough job for Matt Light wow he gets there quick so the heck with that let's double team him get the back helping out that was a true double team. A lot of times the back will hit Dwight Freeney and then release him to the pass, but sometimes you just got to stay there all the time on him. Falk and pass in the backfield, first down, New England. Brady to throw. Over the middle, wide open, Fourier across the 40 to the 45 yard line and a first down. Dwight Freeney, by the way, came back to make that tackle on their first three possessions a field goal and two touchdowns for the New England Patriots you know the Patriots really doing a good job there Greg I would they're deceptive they're liars that's just always the best word for it they come out you they give you a formation two tight ends two running backs everybody thinks run and what is it a play action pass here's a run straight up the middle and this is pass and pass across midfield and into Colt territory to Jim Nance in New York all right, guys, after Drew Bledsoe threw his first touchdown in five games, the Giants come back one play later, and Kerry Collins connects with Amani Toomer, 77 yards. And just a moment ago, the Bills kicked a field goal to go up 10-7 over the Giants. Let's go back to Greg and Phil. 
A couple of teams trying to get the ship back on course. Second and three. Kevin Falk. First down inside the 45 to the 42. Boy, a nice job by Kevin Falk. What happens? They've been drawing these draw plays up the middle. Dwight Freeney gets caught inside. Excellent block by Daniel Graham. Watch 82. Pushes him right down inside. And the wide receiver, Bethel Johnson, terrific job getting the block on the corner and allows the big run. 12 first downs to Indianapolis is five. And Brady going to go deep. Far side. They get tangled up. The ball falls incomplete. Walt Harris on Bethel Johnson. It is not pass interference when your feet get tangled. And I don't know if you could teach yourself that, but if I was a defensive back, I'd tangle feet all the time. But Bethel Johnson, Tom Brady says this is the fastest human being on earth. And that's what happened. Walt Harris steps on the back of his heels. It looks like Bethel Johnson is buying. Brady told us you can't throw the ball far enough. And that's right. He could have thrown it about five more yards. And Bethel Johnson would have got there. Second and ten. Here's Falk. And Falk spun at the line of scrimmage and falls forward to about the 42-yard line. Raheem Brock credit for the tackle. There is no gain on the play. It's third and ten. Well, what that was that time, it was just a different way to try to run a draw play, per se. And why it was stopped, Indianapolis's defense was blitzing. And it has had a lot of guys that accidentally ran into the runner. Robert Mathis is into the game for the Colts. Pass rusher. He's number 98. He's only 235 pounds, but he's caught Bill Belichick's attention. Brady, quick flip to Falk. And Falk tripped up before he gets to the 40-yard line. Fine play by Nick Harper, number 25, and that'll force the punt. Just a fine play by everybody on the defense. Now they've got some emotion, and they're playing faster. Look how quick they get to the quarterback. I know it's a screen, but look at the pursuit, and that pursuit, and Nick Harper's tackle stops the first down. Ken Walter comes on to punt it away, and Terrence Wilkins is deep at his own 10-yard line. Walter will try to put Peyton Manning into a hole here with less than four minutes to play in the first half. This one hits Wilkins, and he chases it down and runs it out of bounds. I don't think Terrence Wilkins was looking to make a play on that. It just bounced in front of him, bounced off of him, and then he kind of showed it the way out of bounds. So Peyton Manning coming back. You know, it has been home sweet home for Peyton Manning. Look at the difference or the, the, the way he ranks when he plays at home in completions, yards per attempt, yards per game, and his quarterback rating. Well, anytime there's ones and twos along any stat in the NFL, that's, you're doing pretty good. And he's been solid so far today. Missed Marvin Harrison for a touchdown. But the pressure by the pass rush caused him to do that. 3.32 to play. Two timeouts remaining for the Colts. They start from the 14. Man comes free. Flips to Edron James. James trying to reverse field and doesn't get very far. Nice play made by Asante Samuel, a rookie out of Central Florida. Rookies, the Patriots have a few that play. Asante Samuel, defensive back. Eugene Wilson. Ty Warren, number one pick, comes in. Dan Kleckel's in there now. But don't ask the coach about him. On second and ten, to give us to James. And James with running room across the 20, across the 25, and out to the 27 yard line. That's a first down. Thirteen hundred and ninety two career rushing attempts for Edron James. Manning 
coming under pressure and he goes down at the 21 yard line and we have a flag flying out of the secondary. Richard Seymour is the man who got to Peyton Manning. And Richard Seymour is upset. Illegal contact foul. Number 95 defense. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. That penalty is on Roman Pfeiffer. He's upset Richard Seymour because it takes away a sack and Roman Pfeiffer they want to be physical with receivers when they run shallow routes across the field. A receiver came in front of Roman Pfeiffer. It was about five yards downfield. He just reached out and hit him. Or I should say he reached out and grabbed him. So it's a first down now in Indianapolis at their own 32 yard line. Manning with time throws over the middle tipped in the air and it almost intercepted. Eugene Wilson had it. You know, it looked like he thought it was a little warm and didn't want to hold on to it. He had it, a football that's tipped up in the air. Watch Marvin Harrison coming across. Goes up, can't get two hands on it. But any time a football is tipped up in the air over the middle of the field, Greg, you know it. You watched enough games. It's usually picked off. Peyton Manning and the Colts are just lucky there. Second and ten. the middle and hit Marcus Pollard. It'll be third and ten. Peyton now one for his last five throwing for yards. Well Marcus Pollard is saying he was held so that slows him down just a little bit and that's why he is not ready for the football when it comes at him. I think he can say it was an accurate pass. It was pretty accurate. I kind of like to do that to you. Go off a pass, hit you right in the head. Be nice. Payback. Two defensive linemen. Look at that. Different look. Manning stepping up, throws this side. Edwin James, 40, 45, and out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's a first down, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. A minute 56 on the clock. 17-3 New England. The Colts trying to get on the board before the break. Valerie Bertinelli. Haven't seen her in a while. 49-yard line. A minute 56 to play. Colts with two timeouts. Manning gives to Edwin James. Lots of running room on the left side. First down yardage inside the 40. Still on his feet. Bowling his way to the 31-yard line. One of the reasons why Edron James has space to run in, the New England defense, look how deep the safeties are. So you really have two less tacklers to deal with. They cross him up with the run. New England was rushing the passer, and then Edron James showing his talent to make defenders miss. Edron James' first 20-yard run of the season. Marvin Harrison with the reception inside the 25 to the 23, or close to the 22. Ty Law making the stop under a minute 15 to play. See, this, this Colts offense, they can be patient because the talent, they have so many good players, they can take small, passing plays and make them big by making defenders miss. Second and one. Manning throws. Diving catch is made by Harris or Troy Walters make it. Troy Walters on the far side of the field. What a catch. And Manning calls timeout to stop the clock with 49 seconds. Asante Samuel Samuels was all over the receiver. In fact, he had Troy Walters covered so well that he did not think the football was going to be thrown. I watched the play. I saw him break out Troy Walter, Walters and Asante Samuels cut underneath him and just figured there's no way Peyton Manning will throw this. Let's backtrack about five plays ago and the interception that almost happened and didn't for New England and Eugene Wilson. Instead, the Colts threatened. Reminder coming up. The next Tell Halftime Report will send you back to New York with Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer for the scores and highlights of the action taking place so far today. It's all coming up on the next Tell Halftime Report. You know, Greg, you're right. Going back that the Colts got a break, and they have taken advantage of that break. So far, 
with at least it looks like a field goal attempt and maybe a touchdown. First and goal from the eight yard line. Colts down to one timeout. Dominique Rhodes is the back behind Manning. Rhodes with the football and not much happening on the left side. Manning will want to huddle him up in a hurry. That's I want to say it's pretty hard to run the football when the big guy's in there. And the big guy's back, Ted Washington. Their run defense statistically has improved dramatically since the return of Ted Washington. Edron James back on the field. Manning, quick pass, incomplete at the two-yard line intended for Marcus Pollard. And a fine job by Teddy Bruschi playing pass defense. It'll be third and goal. Teddy Bruschi, number 54, is really one of the first small linebackers that I remember coming in the NFL and having success. I thought, where is he going to play? Too small. New England, eight years ago, created a role for him, and now every team in the league has guys like Teddy Bruschi. And now the Patriots call a timeout. It's third and goal with 19 seconds on the clock when we come back to the RCA Dome. Romeo Cornell talking with Roman Pfeiffer. Romeo Cornell, otherwise known as Rack. You know, it's been, I don't even know what his mental initial is, but nickname is Rack. We're going to give out some nicknames today, though, Greg, so that's why I'm starting. Can't wait. You can. I got one for you, I'm too. I'm sure you do. Pumpkin pie. Third and goal. truth Peyton Manning that is so far from what he was trying to do in the play but just we'll show you later what happened they knocked down the receivers on his front side so he just turns to his left and he finds Marcus Pollard tremendous job by Peyton Manning and the offensive line Tyrone Poole was no match for Pollard at the goal line the missed interception turns out to be big for both sides. It's a 17 to 10 New England lead. 12 seconds on the clock when we come back for the kickoff. Why I was talking about the touchdown throw. Two wide receivers right here. Edge and James is going to come out in the flat. Watch what happens. Nobody's open. James is going to get leveled. Nobody to throw to. Manning works to the other side of the field. The defense now is overcommitted to his right, and he finds Marcus Pollard. That is really tremendous reaction to what the defense has just done to you. On their first three drives of the game, the Colts totaled five first downs. They had six first downs on that last drive alone. Boy, you're talking about a shift in momentum. It's just now the crowd's back into it. The Colts feel good about they stopped the... New England offense and now they've moved it on the New England defense. Colts have put ten. the final time remaining here in the first half. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the receiving team that penalty is disregarded by rule because the end of the half is here. We're going to attempt to try and that will be the end of the half. Everything that we just said about the Colts feeling going in the locker room. Well, we were just reverse it because it's all turned around in the last 12 seconds of the first half. 92 yards on the return, New England's longest since 1999. And now, Bill Levy is coming to the sideline. Uh oh, did he step out of bounds? That's the only thing I can think of because he did run down the right sideline. And if it's under review, it comes from upstairs. Here it is. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. It's going to be a better view. I think there's some wishful thinking on the part of the fans here. 
but there is nothing there that would overturn what is now a 92 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. I tell you what it must be this surface indoors but he looked he looked like one of the fastest human beings on <laughs> earth running but we saw it last time we were here Greg when the New York Jets played the Indianapolis Colts. It is a fast surface and players like Bethel Johnson during the return the runner never stepped out of bounds it is a touchdown. Bethel Johnson is New England's second round draft pick out of Texas A&M. Last week he scored his first career touchdown on a 27 yard touchdown catch against Houston. So say they take advantage of situations like this indoor on the turf. Vinatieri's extra point and that brings the first half to an end. The New England Patriots come right back with a huge play on special teams. Let's go down Armin. Thanks Greg. Coach obviously you cut it to seven that big drive and then a huge reversal of momentum. Yeah that's dumb on my part kicking the ball deep. Uh, we just got to bounce back from it the second half. We're starting to move the ball. Uh, we got to get them stopped on defense. All right coach. Thank you Greg. All right Armin that's the end of the first half. 24 10 Patriots back after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the Nextel Halftime Report. Sponsored by Nextel, nationwide walkie-talkie. All right, folks, we've got the New England, Indianapolis, and Cincinnati, Pittsburgh audiences in here on the Nextel Halftime Report. Jim Nance along with Dan Dion and Boomer. Almost unforgivable. You give up a kick return on the last play of the half. What a performance, though, by the Patriots at Indy, Dion. I'll tell you what, Brady is on fire. You see Michael Cloud takes it in four yards for the touchdown, put him up 10-0. But Brady... On the 31-yard line, he wants it all. Diedrich Ward takes it in. I, I don't know. I understand what's wrong with this secondary. They have to answer right here. You see Peyton Manning hitting his tight end. Pollard, who runs over. You don't want to be a cornerback caught in that situation facing the big guy. Brings it 17 to 10. You should squib kick this ball. You should make the tackle. Shorten the field. Hustle, Can hustle. you believe this is going on right now? Kickoff return. Bethel Johnson outruns oncoming pursuers. This is unbelievable, Jim. I really can't believe that at this point, 24-10 in New England. But what a performance by Tom Brady today here. Deani completes his first 12 passes of this game. You know, this is a modern-day run and shoot right here. A bunch of short passes, completion sentence is going to be high. I think uh, in another pass or so, you're going to see him get one out. Just putting the ball in the hands of playmakers, making things happen. You notice the one thing here, Deion, is they're not really blitzing him. You see a guy getting the ball off, throwing it quickly. Tony Dunsey to slow him down, so I'm going to have to play some man coverage. You see a lot of zone, blitz him a little bit, put him in, under some pressure. And there you see the first half stats, the Brady touchdown pass to Diedrich Ward and Manning to Pollard. How about the Bills? Bledsoe finally gets a touchdown pass. It's been five games since he last threw, threw one. And there's a completion to Eric Moles. He gets piled on a little bit there. They review that. It's not a fumble. Then Drew Bledsoe finds Dave Moore. Finally, the Bills score with Dave Moore. That rhymes. Does that rhyme scores score, with score, Dave Moore? That rhymes. He got hurt on that play. Might not return. And a great pass here by Kerry Collins right down the middle, splitting the safeties. Amani Toomer. Toomer. Kicks touchdown. Big play. Well, there's one more here for Bledsoe. Coming up, Dan. Finds Bobby Shaw across the middle. Nice run after catch right here. You love that? It's called rack touchdown. Both quarterbacks look pretty good in this one so far, making some big plays in the passing game. But it's a 10-point Buffalo lead. And there's the Bobby Shaw stats including the touchdown Hall and Toomer with the long one, one of two catches. How about the Eagles? Deuce Staley scores a touchdown in this battle of division leaders down to Carolina. And McNabb, well, he uh, finally throws. That's just the first interception he's thrown in the entire month of November. DeLome, nothing exciting happening there. But the Bengals are. The Bengals get it going early here, Boomer. Yeah, how about John Kittner to Chad Johnson? Get used to this, folks. This has been going on for about the last six weeks. But this is Kelly Washington right here, 51-yard touchdown reception. And I hear you, Cincinnati. They say, hey, Boomer, how about the Cincinnati Bengals and Super Bowl? Hey, the baby steps first before we even start talking about Houston, all right? Please. But John Kitna again, here it is, Chad Johnson. What a tremendous athlete this kid is, making all the plays. And now on fourth and five, the Bengals don't even want to kick it. People go, they want to go for it. Well, they don't make it. But then it comes back, Tommy Maddox down the middle of the Plexico burst. He gets whacked. That led to a field goal for the Steelers. And then John Kitna right here, four yards, 14-3 lead right there to Chad Johnson. Bengals are up. 
And I'll tell you what, playing with a lot of confidence on offense, Chad both Johnson. running and passing. Johnson over 1,000 yards receiving. Sorry, Boomer, on the season. Chad Johnson just makes a big play, it seems, every week. Meanwhile, the 49ers, Jeff Garcia, has been awful. This was a tight game, 10-6, <laughs> and then Anthony Hello, Wright hooked up with uh, Marcus Robinson Can again. Can it be any harder, Jim? T.O. told you that four weeks ago. And then Ray Lewis ran back one for a touchdown. Here's St. Louis. What a wild one this is. Moss gets a score there for the Vikings. But Bruce for the Rams. They lead by a field goal in the shootout. Arizona down to the Bears at halftime. Well, they're on to the third quarter there. Cordell gets the start today. Throws a touchdown pass to Marty Booker. Meanwhile, look at this. Three seconds to go in the half. And the Falcons have lost all five games this year when they led at halftime. <laughs> Good news for the Texans. <laughs> Coming up later today, Kansas City, San Diego, Denver, Oakland, Cleveland, Seattle, right here. Well, humble, humble. See Michael Vick. Yes. yes. And the NFL on CBS will continue second half action in just a moment. You are tough, man. CBS Sports presents the Nextel Halftime Report. Sponsored by Nextel, nationwide walkie-talkie. Welcome back to Indianapolis 24 10 Patriots is our score at the break going with Phil Sims. I'm Greg Gumbel. Let's go back to your keys to the game at the beginning of the day Phil. You said that Bill Belichick and the Patriots wanted to stop the big play of the of the Indianapolis Colts they and it that. was a matter of Peyton Manning going up against and matching wits with Belichick's defense and they both won Bill Belichick won early Peyton Manning got the hang of the defense. I thought in that last drive but the story of the game is since it's a 14 point lead for the New England Patriots is. Can Indianapolis's defense slow down the, the Patriots offense? They did stop them right before half, but can they continue that and give some field position for their offense? Pretty interesting admission from Tony Dungy, too, as uh, he told Armin Kate and I shouldn't have kicked it deep. Our look at the halftime statistics. Total yardage is in favor of the New England Patriots, as is the passing yardage. The rushing yards, uh, thanks to Edron James and a couple of uh, big shots by him on the ground, and the completion percentage, Tom Brady is throwing it all over the field with reckless abandon. Yeah, you know, well, Tony Dungy, I think if he'd have squib kicked it, and it had been a big return. I would have been second guessing him. I just figured when you kick it off deep, come on, play it safe. Somebody hustle and make a tackle. Colts will get the football first here. And this is Terrence Wilkins from about the three. Cuts back, penalty markers fly, and he's across the 25 to the 27. Well, the same person committed two fouls on the same. Holding number 34 receiving team during the return. 10 yard penalty, first down. That penalty is on Jason Doring. We go down to Armin. Thanks, Greg. Well, talking to Bill Belichick, he said, hey, we answered the bell pretty well in the first half, except for his words, a couple of stupid plays. Obviously, the dropped interception, a couple of penalties on that last drive. He thinks it's going to come down to a passing game. Who can throw it, who can catch it, and in his words, who can protect the best. The end. Back to you. All right, Armin, thank you. Meanwhile, the Colts lost. Uh, Dallas Clark their rookie tight end and the last word that we got on Clark is that he was being x-rayed that right leg was being x-rayed the more information we get the sooner we'll pass it on to you so the Colts start from their own 12 yard line Manning fake in a hurry Flips it out to Troy Walters. And Walters up the sideline across the 20 to the 21-yard line, a gain of nine. And the leaders in the first half. Manning throwing the football at 13 of 19 for 119 yards. Edron James with 41 yards on the ground. And through the air, it was Marvin Harrison with three catches for 33 yards and a near touchdown in the second quarter. Second and one. Manning will get to James. James will get the first down. Out to about the 24-yard line. Richard Seymour, Roman Pfeiffer with the stop. Well, going back to what Armin Kate had said when he talked to Bill Belichick, that's what I believe, too. It's going to beat up to this Patriots defense. You might give up a few runs, but if you lose the game, it's because you're going to lose it uh, against the passing game of Peyton Manning and his wide receivers. 
James and not much there. You know, I'm talking about this Patriot defense with Rodney Harrison last night. I thought it was interesting when he was talking about how different an atmosphere it is for him in New England from San Diego. And the thing he said, there is so much maturity on this team. He doesn't have nearly the responsibility on defense because it's spread out amongst, amongst a bunch of veterans. Yeah, I'd say about 15 of them, Greg. It's, it really is a different environment as a person, of course, in New England over San Diego, but as a player, scheme, and all the veterans. That pass just underthrown. Nice play by Teddy Bruschi. Marcus Pollard was in Peyton Manning's sights. It'll be third and eight. Yeah, you know, we were talking about Teddy Bruschi in the first half. It's just that how he was one of the first smaller linebackers to have success in the league, and now there's so many of them like him, and it's they're just athletic. They can play in space, which is important with offenses being more spread out, more wide receivers. And best of all about Teddy Bruschi, he just has that God-given athletic feel to know what's to know right and wrong when he's on the football field. Third and eight. Manning. With time, throwing over the middle, it's incomplete. Pass intended for Reggie Wayne, and he most definitely was not open. Yeah, one of his ex-teammates, Tyrone Poole, number 38, is all over it. And a sin for a wide receiver is to ever, never let a defensive back go underneath you or make the first move to the football. So Hunter Smith will kick it away, and Kevin Falk is deep. Nice kick. Backs Falk up to the 21. Tripped up, but still on his feet and across the 35 to about the 39-yard line. Nice return by Kevin Falk of 18 yards after a 53-yard punt. 24-10, Pats. We'll be back. Tonight on 60 Minutes, what did Mike Wallace say to Lawrence Taylor, one of the most fearsome players in football history that made him cry? 60 Minutes tonight. On first down, Patriots will keep it on the ground into the 40-yard line. It goes Kevin Falk, Marcus Washington meets him there. A pickup of one. It'll be second and nine. And time for the Indianapolis Colts to reassert themselves. We talked about it at the kickoff. Who's going to grab the momentum here in the second quarter? And it'll be important for these Colts to make a defensive stand. First play, Mike Doss, safety. Blitz right up the middle. Missed the running back. So they got to be a little more aggressive and force the hand of this New England offense. Second and nine, quick pass, and that's complete to Fourier, and Fourier down to the 47-yard line. Tom Brady said last night the tight ends could play a big part of the game plan. When it's zoned, when they're looking at the quarterback, Christian Fourier has a good feel, good pass receiver, knows what to do and made a good decision that time. Brady considers Christian Fourier to have great route running skills. On third down. Fall. Nice job of working his way through the line and appears he has enough for a first down near midfield. Let's go down Armour. Well, Greg, we have that information on Dallas Clark now, and it's not good. It's a fractured fibula, and obviously to the right leg, he will not return. And there's two others, defensive back Corey Bird, right shoulder. He's out, along with fullback Detron Smith, his left knee. He will not play today. Back to you. All right, Armin, thank you. Great. Tough loss for Dallas Clark, who has been playing so well for the Colts. That's right. Mike Cloud on the field. And a first down, New England. Quick pass, complete Dion Branch, and Branch met at the 40-yard line, but that's enough for another first down. Nothing but a good play by Tom Brady. Blitz has to move, and on the run, makes a perfect throw to Dion Branch. Just in front of Walt Harris. And boy, everybody looks, everybody looks fast on this AstroTurf. Brady to throw again. Run out of time, lost the football, picked up. And at the 43-yard line is Patrick Pass with the recovery. Blitz again by the Colts, and it's a good thing 
Marcus Washington gets to Tom Brady because there is a wide open uncovered receiver down the field. Tom Brady gets hit. Nobody is covering Daniel Graham down the field. Tom Brady saw him trying to throw it to him but doesn't have the time. Second and 14. Deep drop this time. Brady throwing this side and batted down. Fine play by Walt Harris, the cornerback. When you're down 24 to 10, you haven't stopped the other team. You got to start playing with pressure. The Colts defense is doing that. Watch the previous play as Daniel Graham goes across the field uncovered. Oh, it could have been a touchdown. But the blitz gets to the quarterback. Third and 14. Brady, 18 for 21, throwing the ball here this afternoon. Near sideline. Caught and out of bounds. Diedrich Ward, first down. They needed 14, they got 19. Well, they do. Terrific job by Tom Brady. Seeing the defense, they disguise it. He reads it, he makes a good decision. The safeties are in the middle, so when they're in the middle, he knows it's one-on-one -on -one to the outside. What a good route. And Greg, we've seen the speed of Bethel Johnson, so you have to respect it, and that's why they're way off. Just inside the 20-yard line to the 19 goes Kevin Falk. Clock continues to move. 9.20 to play in the third. You talked about it. The Patriots started out. We saw it at halftime. Deion Sanders talking about it. All the short passes. But what is New England doing now? They're starting to look down the field more. Looking for those big plays. Because they're ahead. They know the defense is going to be aggressive. They're going to come up. Now you go for the big plays. Brady to throw on second and five. And throws complete inside the 15-yard line to J.J. Stokes, the newest arrival. He made one catch for 31 yards prior to that one, and Tom Brady was excited. Look how big he stands out there amongst all the other receivers that Brady has to throw well, to. Well, yeah, you know, the New England Patriots, they lead the league in small receivers, I think, or, you know, it's not a tall unit, so J.J. Stokes, he's like Gulliver in the land of, what do they call those people, the little Lilliputians. Lilliputians, yeah. But he's big. You cut class that yeah, day, Yeah, I did, I cut class. But it gives a quarterback a lot of room for error when you get a big, tall receiver. Brady pulls it down, now goes to the end zone, and it is a caught, no, incomplete. It's out of bounds, and a penalty marker is down in the end zone. That was Stokes pulling it in down there, but it was ruled not a catch. Boy, that was close. Don't you think? I thought it was. I thought he got completion. his foot down, maybe. Pass interference, number 21, defense. Penalty occurred in the end zone. Ball will be spotted at the one-yard line. First down. That penalty is on Harris. Throwing it to the back of the end zone because he has a really big receiver out there. The out and up, it fools Walt Harris. The catch. Nice grab by J.J. Stokes. Let's look and see if he gets his feet in, Greg. One. Two, thank you. Touchdown. Wow. And he held the ball as he went through the process. It was a touchdown. Brady going to throw. Batted up in the air. Grabbed by, looks like Dan Cope in the center. And I'm not second guessing, but I would have challenged it even from the one yard line. You never take a chance when it comes to points on the board. That came awfully close to going the other direction. Could have turned the whole game around. Watch it. The ball's tipped. David Thornton knocks it up in the air. Joe Andrusi. Look at the previous play. The catch. One. Two, 
Touchdown. I like saying that. That falls onto the coaches upstairs who have access to looking at it. Give straight ahead, Cloud, and it's a touchdown. Boy, good second effort by Mike Cloud. Watch it. The Colts, they do a good job. They attack the line of scrimmage. He's short, keeps fighting, gets into the end zone. Boy, another big drive. Third down, third and long. Tom Brady, terrific, terrific throw, but a better catch by Bethel Johnson keeps it going, and they take it in for the score. Vinatieri, extra point try, is good. 7.36 to play, third quarter. Patriots extend their lead. It's New England 31 and the Colts 10. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Old Spice Red Zone. Spice things up. And by Motorola. Intelligence everywhere. Indianapolis, the state capital here in Indiana, and there in the yellow tie is Bob Kraft, and on your left, his right, his wife, Myra, and son, Jonathan. Nice tie. Good TV tie. This is Terrence Wilkins as the Colts try to get something back here, breaks to the outside, and he's down across the 25 to about the 28 or 29-yard line. 7.31 to play, third quarter. Peyton Manning back to work on offense after this. Well, after that big Thanksgiving Day win, you know the Miami Dolphins are sitting at home cheering for the Indianapolis Colts here because they travel to New England next week, and that would be a, a battle for first place. Meanwhile, Indy and Tennessee in a dogfight atop the AFC South. That's how big this game is. Peyton Manning, the give to Edwin James to start things off, and that goes nowhere. Willie McGinnis in on the stop and the faithful getting a little impatient here in Indianapolis. Well you just can't abandon the run altogether. You got to try to keep the defense honest and really you know now the Patriots are going to be conservative on defense. They're going to do the one thing they're not going to do is give you a chance for a big pass play down the field. Second and nine. Safety very deep for the Patriots. Marcus Pollard. Pollard taken head on by Tyrone Poole. And the ball advanced to the 33 yard line. See, Greg, we talk about it, and, and you've seen so many football games yourself now that you even realize when you when you look out in the field and go, wow, well, they are deep. Rodney Harrison, he's in another zip code, as you would say. He's so deep sometimes, but they're gonna make the Colts. Go systematically down the field. Look at that. They're getting near 20 yards, which is about eight yards deeper than normal. Manning intercepted by Poole. Cut in front of the receiver, picked it off, and the Patriots are in position once again. Trying to make a play that's not there. And Peyton Manning knows that after he threw it, he's just like, why did I throw it? Tyrone Poole, they change up. They play man coverage. That's why you'll see him running with the receiver, and he cuts underneath him from the very beginning. Reggie Wayne's the receiver. Look at Tyrone Poole beating him across the field. Excellent job. Excellent job of knowing what you're supposed to do and what the receiver is trying to do. So now Brady and the Patriots are at the 32. First pick Peyton Manning has thrown in more than 100 passing attempts. And Brady goes five wide receivers. Quick pass. Bobbled. And Bethel Johnson finally held on. That came close to being picked off. It sure did. A couple of times. Marcus Washington on the blitz. You've got to expect pressure now if you're the New England offense. Boy, good job of coming back and getting it. But going back to a full break. Peyton Manning, their ex-teammates, and he said, gosh, he's improved. He's improved since he left here, and he gave him a lot of respect 
and he showed that improvement on making that last interception. Second and 13. Brady over the middle through behind and it's intercepted by Strickland. Strickland 35 40 41 and the Colts are back in business and a late flag. It's going to go against New England. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 88, passing 10 yard penalty from the end of the interception, first down. That's going to tack on a lot more for Indianapolis. Well, what that play did and does for Indianapolis, it keeps them in the game. You're down three touchdowns. If you go down four scores, it's probably possible you wouldn't even get four more possessions of the football. So now the Indianapolis Colts offense, don't lose your patience. Take some time and find a way to drive it down and score a touchdown. Manning. Gonna throw short. James. To the 35, just inside the 35 of the Patriots. A couple of rookies, Ty Warren, Asante Samuel, make the stop after a nine yard game. Yeah, I was talking early about the rookies. Cope in the center, Ty Warren, Dan Klecko, and all that. And I was trying to get Bill Belichick to say some good things. He goes, Oh, come on. Hey, you know, they're rookies. And let's just don't put them in the Hall of Fame or anything tomorrow on the air. Second and one, Edwin James inside the 30 for a first down. I believe. I believe Coach Belichick's favorite line was, well, let's not run his flag up the flagpole just yet. <laughs> That's it. Good line. Good direct run by Edrin James. The snap count was quick by Peyton Manning. Catches the defense a little off guard. So now from the New England 28. the 25 still on his feet to about the 21 and Edrin James showing some determined runs you know this Rodney Harrison said we want to keep him from getting outside James has made good yardage up the middle today they have done a wonderful job outside keeping the leverage nowhere for him to go but he's cutting back and when you let Edrin James he is a terrific cutback runner do that you could be in trouble Lost his footage, lost the football, and recovered it. Looked like he might have been stepped on. Yeah, he lost his footage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure I'd said that. You did. Thank you for confirming it. But I'm sure he got <laughs> stepped on. That's what it looked like. And when you get stepped on, oh, the center gets his right foot. Just take the football down with you. And a good job of getting a recovery. Nothing worse than losing your footage. Third and five. And it sets Reggie Wayne in motion. Running out of time. Flips over the middle. Has Pollard. Pollard inside the 15. First down. I tell you what. Terrific recognition by Peyton Manning. They change up again the defense. They try to pressure him. It's man coverage. His moving around. And Marcus Pollard does a good job of changing his route with the quarterback, and they get the completion. Boy, Pollard has been Peyton Manning's emergency stopgap measure today. First down. James. To the 10. Clock continues to move as we come up on two and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. Second and six. James can't spin away from trouble and he's down at the 13 yard line. 
two minutes to play Great. here in the third quarter. And who made the tackle? Jarvis Green, Romeo Cornell, even Bill Belichick told us last night this defense, they're on a little blitz. Jarvis Green gets free, but they have such depth. They have so many players, so they're always fresh, and they all play us a little specific role, and they do it well. Now you got Dan Klecko on the outside being a linebacker. Big third and nine play here for Manning and the Colts. Gonna go to the end zone and over through Reggie Wayne. Boy, it's a tough decision here. Peyton Manning's mad as he looks at his running back, Dominique Rhodes. They blow the protection. And they're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Yes, you got to go for it, I think, down three touchdowns. And you have to think that New England is going to score somewhere in the fourth quarter some kind of points. Indianapolis, as you saw, 16 of its last 19 on fourth down attempts. And they're going to talk about it right here. Timeout on the field, a minute 25 to play in the third quarter. We'll be back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by Norelco. Ultra close, ultra comfortable, guaranteed. So it was the New England Patriots who called that timeout to talk about things here. Manning and the Colts, fourth down. They need the four-yard line for a first down two people in the backfield so they're going to protect against the blitz in case New England does. Manning going for the corner. Caught. Touchdown. Reggie Wayne. Went right back to him in the same corner of the end zone. That was really a terrific play. Manning looks right all the way, but he knows he's coming back to this side. And what he did, when he looked right, it made the safety stay in the middle of the field. Watch. So when he breaks out, Reggie Wayne time, timed it perfect and perfect throw by Peyton Manning. Vanderjack for the extra point. And it's good. Colts bounce right back. 31 17, a minute 20 to play in the third quarter. Hey, tonight on CBS is a night of great holiday entertainment. 20 years ago, he became a hero, then disappeared. Now, a mysterious stranger just might make his family's wish of finding him come true. Peter Falk and Valerie Bertinelli star in a world premiere holiday movie, Finding John Christmas, tonight at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Vanderjet with the kick. from the four it's Bethel Johnson and this time he's going to be wrecked up before he can reach the 20 yard line and these Colts are all fired up can they come from behind you bet they can remember against Tampa Bay earlier this season the Bucks led 35 14 less than five minutes to play Marvin Harrison caught a touchdown to make it 35 28 after a punt Ricky Williams tied the game at 35 with a one yard run Mike Vanderjet's field goal won it in overtime and the Indianapolis Colts were the comeback darlings of the NFL, 38-35. The offensive brain trust on the Colts' sideline. And now it's time for the Colts' defense to step up. Tom Brady and the offense of the New England Patriots have been magnificent today. First down, quick pass, incomplete. Let's go back to the touchdown pass. Yeah, I want to show you one more time. Reggie Wayne, he's watching Rodney Harrison. And Rodney Harrison's looking in the backfield because Peyton Manning knows where he's going. And he's looking at Rodney Harrison. He's got him where he wants. Nobody in the back corner of the end zone. Terrific acting job by Manning and Reggie Wayne. That's Klecko trotting off the field. Second and ten.
Brady, quick pass over the middle, and Falk is met at the 20 by David Thornton. What a hit by Thornton. Let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Wow, we felt that hit all the way back here in New York. How about this fourth and goal for the Steelers? They give it to the bus. This is where we need the laser guys on the goal line. They had to review it. They gave him the touchdown. Bettis, they say, broke the plane before the fumble. 14-10 Bengals. Let's go back to Greg and Phil. Have you noticed, Phil, those Cincinnati Bengals are no longer the doormats in the National Football League? The crowd is up. Third down. And Brady calls timeout. We always hear about the noise factor here in the RCA Dome. That might have been the first time all day that it was a factor today. While we have a moment. Our NFL.com poll question of the day. Which of these AFC teams will be playing in Super Bowl 38? You can log on and cast your vote at NFL.com. Are you all right? I'm fine. Why, why would you ask? Because it's an excitable game. Oh. I thought maybe because I just fell over the chair. That, that too. Yes, okay. But my dexterity, I caught myself at the last second. Tom Brady, terrific day so far. Can they still execute with the crowd noise? And it really goes to the offensive line. Brady needs the 28-yard line for a first down. Tight end to Dwight Freeney's side. Brady throwing over the middle, intercepted. Back to the 25-yard line, Nick Harper. We talked about how when you're a wide receiver, you cannot let the defensive backs get underneath you when you're coming across the middle. But Nick Harper going against Deion Branch Sees the route, has him covered, and makes the interception. We've seen more cornerbacks duck under receivers and cut off their routes today. Well, you know, you get that. That, Greg, you, we hear it all the time. It's preparation and then anticipating what you think is going to happen. Make, that gives you a chance to make big plays. Manning back to work. Play fakes. Edward James throwing over the middle. Six yards to Marvin Harrison. How appropriate we showed that comeback against Tampa Bay. This offense, even against the, one of the best defenses in the league, can still be explosive. Vander Jack's kick is good. 14 seconds to play. Third quarter. The Colts down three touchdowns just a moment ago are now just down by one TD. Wow, Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison against Eugene Wilson down the field. Oh, and you know what happens when you let a person like Marvin Harrison get off the line of scrimmage without hitting him, it's impossible for the safeties to cover him. Greg, we talked about it with with. Uh, Rodney Harrison last night and he says look if the receiver like Rodney <clears throat> excuse me Marvin Harrison gets off the line of scrimmage free there's not much you can do and that's what happened to Eugene Wilson he said of Marvin Harrison that he was incredible quick shifty fast and the best route runner in the NFL well look what happens Ty Law is over Marvin Harrison up here and he doesn't touch him and it puts Eugene Wilson in a very tough spot Three, right to him, too late, perfect throw. And Brady, two interceptions. The Colts turn them into two touchdowns in a minute and six seconds. Wow, that's incredible. And it 
And you said it, the crowd now, they are definitely back into it. There's Brock Hewitt. We, we just saw Damon Hewitt on the Patriots side, and there's his brother Brock on the other side. It's a brother thing. It is. It's like you and me. <laughs> We're brothers. Vanderjack's kick. From the two, it's Bethel Johnson. 20. Wrapped up at the 22. Cato June, Nick Harper on the tackle. And back comes Brady with just nine seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Off the interceptions, the Colts started at their own 18 and then at the Indy 32. It's a 31-24 score. Listen to the crowd. Kevin Falk with room to run up the middle, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Time winds down, and what was a New England runaway is a runaway no more. 31-24, Patriots. We're back to the RCA Dome after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Teams combined for 24 points in the second quarter, 21 in the third, and here we go in the fourth. Patrick pass to the 30. And the crowd's into it. The defense is emotional. They're all fired up. So if you're New England's offense, you want to try to take advantage of the fact of what they're feeling on the other side. Look at the total yards for the game, but take advantage of an aggressive, emotional defense. Draw plays, something different. They work in situations like this. Third and two. Falk looking for the first down, and he's close. It looks short. See, I don't wait. I go ahead and throw it out there. <clears throat> Greg. I said it wasn't short. I said it looked close. And it is short. And onto the field comes Ken Walter and the rest of the punting unit. It's a fired up crowd. It's a fire up Colts team. That's Terrence Wilkins backing up to about his 25. And we're going to get a timeout. Indianapolis calls a timeout. That's the first one that they've used here in the second half. We'll be back. Tony Dungy being extra careful with that timeout, Phil. Yes, he was. Greg, he sent his starting defense back on. He was afraid of the fake. It was a good job by him because I wouldn't put it past Bill Belichick and his staff to go for it and have a little trick play in a situation like this. They had their offensive line in. They just switched them out. Brought in their punting unit. And Walter kicks it away off the side of his foot. But he'll get a favorable bounce, and it bounces at the 30, and it's down at the 30-yard line. What a comeback this Colts team has come up with. It was 31-10. Brady was picked off by the rookie, Donald Strickland, and then hit Reggie Wayne for a fourth down touchdown. Then Harper made the interception, and then Peyton Manning came right back to Marvin Harrison, and it's 31-24 New England. Now, during that timeout, I saw Peyton Manning go up to Tony Dungy, and they had a big discussion. I, I can't imagine talking about, but Tony Dungy took his headset off, 
and wait up and down his head saying yep yep that's okay do it whatever it was so Manning steps up over the middle oh what a grab by Marvin Harrison at the 45 all hands and a first down Marvin Harrison Greg you talked about it Rodney Harrison said he is the best route runner in the National Football League they're hitting him now but look at that catch terrific feet terrific route runner fast and some of the best hands in the league from the 45 Edger and James for a couple to the 47 it'll be second and eight Ted Washington Richard Seymour combine on the stop Do you think those Miami Dolphins watching at home have gotten a little more interested in this game? Shoot, I think the imported fans in here today, they wanted some <laughs> more noise, but, oh, I'm sure they're watching. Probably left the game and came back and said, uh oh let's pay attention now. Manning with good protection coming across the field. That's complete to Troy Walters, and Walters is out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Another Indianapolis first down. Troy Walters is a terrific inside receiver. Oh, and they cross them up. They cross, and when they cross each other as receivers, it makes the defenders run into each other. Good, very good. First down, 37-yard line. Very good play call and execution by the Colts. Could come up with the right word for it. and throws it away being chased by Richard Seymour well I think I told you during the commercial Greg when they punt I would expect this New England defense to change in other words now you're talking about an offense is trying to tie up a football game they're going to become more aggressive they have the last couple plays and that time they make Peyton Manning throw it away Dominique Rhodes has replaced Edron James in the lineup on second and ten when you keep two backs in the backfield you're trying to make sure you don't get hurt by a blitz safety's deep again for the Patriots Manning with time on the move now and is going to run out of bounds leaves the field of play at the 37 yard line Seymour and Vrabel ran him out Good job on both sides. Good coverage. Good job by Peyton Manning. And now if you're the Colts offense, you got to think of this too. You have a field goal kicker who's perfect. You're indoors. Don't lose yardage. Or don't lose yards. Because I still think you might try a long field goal in this situation. Third and nine. Throws complete inside the 25 yard line to Troy Walters. First down, Indianapolis. There are many times in a football game when the defense, there's just nothing you can do about it. And this is just one of those plays. Peyton Manning anticipates the route by Troy Walters. He turns, ball's there, nothing you can do. Asante Samuels, good coverage. But when a quarterback is hot and on target, you can't defend it. Just inside the 25-yard line. Pump fake. Going deep. Walters overthrown. He was held on the way. Pass interference. Defense. First down, first down. You know, sometimes I don't know how they do it, but Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, guesses right. It's a blitz, and he has the perfect route on a little move and go against a safety. Peyton Manning's pump fake that gets Eugene Wilson. It's just a feel, it's knowing the people you're playing against, and it was the right call at the right time. From the seven, entering James. Maybe a yard, a hard-fought yard at that. 
you know I've talked to offensive coordinators Greg and even some of my own and I ask them questions after the game so why did you do that and they just go oh I called that play I knew the guy on the other side was mad and I knew he tried to play and you just go all that preparation all that work and sometimes it just comes down to uh, the human instinct knowing the personality of the guy you're playing against Indianapolis has been terrific in the red zone so far today second and goal from the six man quick pass incomplete inside the five yard line pass intended for Walters and Eugene Wilson got there about the same time the ball did I didn't even see Eugene Wilson so when Manning goes to throw it oh nice job of seeing the quarterback again and reacting to it you can react a little more when you're this this close to they are that close to the end zone because you don't have to worry about the territory behind you third and goal Manning end zone touchdown Unbelievable. Troy Walters. Phil, you're a fan of talking about the back of the end zone and how oh. it's a quarterback's dream. Oh, Greg, it is. And just let me tell you, they're taking advantage of a rookie. Just another terrifically designed play. Watch the quarterback, react to the quarterback, and that's what they want you to do, and that's why the Colts got the touchdown. 10-21 to play, fourth quarter. We're tied at 31. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Chrysler Pacifica, well beyond the SUV. KFC Popcorn Chicken. Want 100% chicken breast in fun-sized bites? You got a KFC What's Cooking. And by the all-new AOL 9.0 Optimized. Life needs upgrades. We're tied at 31. It's worth repeating. If Indianapolis can come up with a victory here, Miami plays at New England next week looking for a tie atop the AFC East. Bethel Johnson from the 1. The 20. 30. Breaks free. 40. And finally pushed out of bounds. David Thornton made the saving push after a 67 yard return. I would say this to Tony Dungy it is now time for the squib kick because it is proven twice today that you're having trouble tackling the rookie from Texas A&M. And just at the last second, that little bit of a stumble kept him from going all the way with the football. Your team's under pressure, both sides of the ball, you're leaking oil, but your special teams bail you out. How about that for turning the tide again? Brady in business at the Colt 31. Gonna throw it. Sideline complete. David Gibbons, Gibbons to about the 15. So the Colts come up with three touchdowns in less than six minutes and look at the Patriots back knocking on the door. Yeah and the Patriots going to go back to what they started out the game with. Some short passes and see if the Colt defenders can make the tackle. On the first play the answer is no. Quick pass to Gibbons. Gibbons shakes the tackler at the 15, down at the 13-yard line. Again, David Thornton with the play on the near side. It'll be second and seven. David Thornton. We were in Kansas City last Sunday. We talked to Bonnie Holiday from the University of North Carolina. We asked him some questions about David Thornton. He was a freshman when Bonnie Holiday was a senior. And he says, oh, you mean full tilt? So full tilt, tilt means... He goes full speed all the time. 
Another red zone opportunity for the New England Patriots. Brady under pressure, throwing far side of the field, incomplete. Rob Morris was in on Brady. Rob Morris has been back there a couple times today, not able to come up with a sack, but he does get the incomplete throw because of the pressure. There's Morris off to the sideline as Brady looks at a third and seven. Brady looking, throwing, end zone, touchdown, Deion Branch. dance and the Patriots come fighting back in a hurry this is so well conceived they fake the draw then they have the short receiver to the outside and it's almost what the Colts have done to the Patriots you get a receiver on a safety no match receivers almost always win that matchup Vinatieri's extra point is good. 8.36 to play. Fourth quarter. Brady brings the Patriots right back with the touchdown pass to Deion Branch. It's 38-31 New England. Tonight on CBS, we'll tell you that coming up, New England's scoring drive 31 yards in four plays. As a sight adjust. This is Wilkins. 25. And out to about the 28. As I was saying, tonight on 60 Minutes, what did Mike Wallace say to Lawrence Taylor, one of the most fearsome players in football history that made him cry? At 60 Minutes tonight. Then it's TV's most watched new drama, Cold Case, followed by the world premiere holiday movie Finding John Christmas, starring Peter Falk and Valerie Bertinelli. That's tonight here on CBS. Well, I'll tell you what, this is the way to get get rid of those lethargic feelings after eating a lot over the Thanksgiving Day holidays. Watch this game or to be here. So exciting. Well, Manning in a familiar position. He and the Colts are used to being behind today. 38 31 eight and a half minutes to play. Yeah, they have been under a little stress all day long, haven't they, this Colts offense? Manning, short pop over the middle. James, to about the 35. Let me show you. Let's go back to the Patriot touchdown. Why he's so wide open. First, here's the linebacker, should get a hit. Because there's a fake draw, now the receiver, Deion Branch, gets off free. And the safety, oh boy, Tom Brady looks inside. Mike Doss, he's a rookie, very tough on him. across the 40 to about the 43 44 yard line and a first down Edger and James has contributed some hard nose running today yes he has and it's just been Greg it's everybody on this Indianapolis offense it's the offensive line Edger and James running hard you got Marcus Pollard Reggie Wayne Oh, okay Marvin Harrison he's good too Last time these Colts played a game here in the RCA Dome, they beat the New York Jets 38-31. They trail 38-31 with 7.20 to play. James. Across the 45 to the 47. And you know, to answer some of your questions, we talked about this all day long. Has the Indianapolis Colts offense, have they had the patience? Absolutely. And then they've guessed right. When to be aggressive is when the New England defense has been aggressive. And that's what's burned New England's defense for some of those touchdowns. Edger into the sideline for a breather. Dominique Rhodes in the backfield on second and eight. Manning's pass. That's complete. 
And that's across midfield to the 47 yard line of the Patriots, Marvin Harrison. You know, Peyton Manning makes so many throws. And we talked to Bill Belichick. He just had the highest respect uh, for what Peyton Manning does. But his height, the fact that he's so tall, that he stands tall, that he throws over the top, allows him so many times under pressure to still make just routine throws down the field to his receiver. Manning looking, throwing behind Reggie Wayne, and it's incomplete. Manning wants the punting unit to stay on the sideline. Well, because it's going to be fourth and about a yard, the Colts were gambling a little, trying to go down the field. This is a good call. If it was fourth and five or six, no. The ball at the 47 yard line of the New England Patriots. Fourth and one. Watch the snap count. Give it to James. James stood up at the line of scrimmage. Bulls forward for the first down. Great second effort by Edger and James. When it was third and a yard and you throw it down the field, that almost tells you that they were thinking about going forward on fourth already. But this is just hard running. Edron James stays with it, gets hit by Teddy Bruschi, and still fights forward for the first down. Three yard pickup on fourth down by James makes it a first down at the New England 44. Clock continues to move, coming up on 5.15 to play. And Manning calls timeout. Rodney Harrison made a quick move to the line of scrimmage. Manning calls time. 5-10 to play in the fourth, and we'll be back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Wachovia Securities. Together, we can achieve uncommon results. And by Staples. That was easy. On a special Tuesday jag, you've heard smoking can kill, but did one sailor's desperate need for a cigarette cause an unsuspecting shipmate to die? Don't miss an all-new jag on a special night, Tuesday at 8, 7 central on CBS. 5-10 to play, fourth quarter. Peyton Manning's numbers. Since a 4 for 8 start, he has been red hot. Now from the 44-yard line, first down. Can't get away, and down he goes at the 49-yard line. Mike Vrabel and Willie McGinnis overpowered the blocking. Willie McGinnis just got a good job, a good jump against Ryan Deem on the outside. That allows him to get the edge. Manning gets away, but McGinnis stays with it, and Mike Vrabel jumps in there too. Loss of five. The sack puts the Colts back to 49. It's second and 15. Manning flips it out and overthrows Edger and James on the attempted screen. It'll be third and 15. Boy, nice timing. Good blitz. Good blitz by the New England defense. And then Willie McGinnis. You know, you talked about it, Greg. Rodney Harrison said it's so neat to play with so many proven veterans. Willie McGinnis on a blitz, sees the screen, pulls off of it, and makes Peyton Manning throw the football away. I was going to say they're in four down territory, but if it's fourth and real long, then you have to punt. Hope your defense can hold them. Third and 15. Manning over the middle. Popped up into the air, incomplete intended for Pollard. Roman Pfeiffer was there to break it up. And what that a, will bring on the punting unit. I'm sorry. What a series, though, by the defense. Pressuring the quarterback. Blitzing, stopping the screen, and nobody opened down the field. Peyton Manning was looking for Troy Walters in the slot, and he was really well covered by Asante Samuel that time. That first down series for the Patriots went sack, incomplete pass, incomplete pass. Kevin Falk stands between his own 5 and 10-yard line. Hunter Smith, fair catch, called for. And 
Falk makes the catch at the eight yard line. You know, better to kick to Kevin Falk than kick to Bethel Johnson, who has been outstanding today. A 92 yard touchdown return on the left and a huge return of more than 65 yards here in the second half on the right. 67 to be exact. Wow, that's great. Well, late in the year, a rookie coming through for the Patriots. Coach Belichick may find it hard to talk about. <laughs> well, you know, but he did after the game. He, well, he did okay. Mm. Just okay. Each team with one timeout remaining. Falk and pass in the backfield. Brady trying to work his way out from the shadow of his own goalpost. Straight ahead, out across the 10 to the 12-yard line, is Kevin Falk. It'll be second and six. It's almost down, really, Greg, to a... It almost has to be a three and out. You have the two-minute warning, and then you have one timeout left. So if you give them a first down... Even if you did stop them the second three downs, it would not leave you much time uh, uh, time to score a touchdown with your offense. On the ground again. Oh, what a hit. Loose ball. Let's see who covers. <laughs> it's the Colts ball. They're looking for the ball under the pile, and Raheem Brock had it out here on the side. Marcus Washington coming across. Speed just hits Kevin Falk so hard, and Kevin Falk never felt him or saw him coming. Boy, what speed, what hustle. Kevin Falk does not even have time to protect the football. There is Raheem Brock coming oh. away with the football. Not much question as to who recovered. And now Indianapolis with a chance at the New England 11-yard line. Patriots have turned the ball over three times this half. Three forty-five on the clock. Blitz. Manning had it batted down as it left his hand. It'll be second and ten. Richard Seymour got a big hand up on it. Good job by Richard Seymour. If you're rushing the passer from the inside, if you don't get it right away, stop, look at the quarterback and raise your arms. That's what he did that time and knocked it down. Manning 0 for his last four throwing. Well, they are given some terrific looks on defense. They clock down to four. Manning throws it away. Made the first row of the seats. Well, they were trying to get back to Eugene Wilson one more time, but I think Eugene Wilson's learned his lesson. Don't make that first jump too quick and let a receiver get behind you. That's why Peyton Manning threw it away. Third and ten. You know, as you sit up here, it looks difficult, doesn't it? But, you know, the Patriots moving around and they're giving a lot of different looks, so it's hard for Peyton Manning to zero in on what they're actually going to do. Harrison and Wayne to the near side. Going to hand it off. No, Manning still has it. Backs up. Looking. Throws it away. Now on fourth down. For those same reasons you were talking about, shortage of timeouts and so on, you forego the field goal and go for the touchdown here? Absolutely. You go for the touchdown. Okay. So much for going for the touchdown. Onto the field comes the field goal unit. Vanderjat to kick. Hunter Smith 
to hold. Hunter Smith faked one against the New York Jets and went 21 yards for a touchdown, but Vanderjack kicked this one. Greg, I would have gone for it. If you don't miss it, then you stop them with your one timeout and a two minute warning. You're not going to have the full length of the field to go with it. Now, you're still going to need a touchdown. You still need a touchdown to win the game. And now, a decent return, a punt. You're going to have a longer field to deal with. We welcome those of you who just joined us here in Indianapolis along with Phil Sims and Armin Kutsay and I'm Greg Gumbel. 327 to play in the fourth quarter. It has been a heck of a football game. The Patriots started in a hurry and at one point built up a 31 to 10 lead before the Indianapolis Colts came roaring back to tie the game at 31. There's Dallas Clark. The rookie tight end for the Indianapolis Colts who fractured his leg in the first half. You know, maybe the fact that all three of those plays by the Colts, none of them look good. Maybe they factored into Tony Dungy's decision to kick the field goal, but well, I, I would have went for it. And now, what do you do? Kicking off. You kick it deep to Bethel Johnson one more time. You know, I'd be about finished kicking to Bethel Johnson today. Yeah, what well, they say? You slap me in the face with the skunk three times, you know? <laughs> I'll figure out what it is. So. Patriots have some people along the 40 yard line. Vanderjack has scooted along the ground. And it bounces all the way back to Patrick Pass. 20, 25, out to the 28 yard line. Just a reminder coming up next, game two of doubleheader action on CBS. You will see either Denver at Oakland, Kansas City at San Diego, or Cleveland at Seattle. We invite you to check your local listings for more. Go to NFL.com or NFL on AOL. Uh Three plays and out. Trying to figure it up. The coach could get. They could still have about a minute and 40 in the minute 40 range left in the game to still score. Each team with a timeout remaining. Brady from the shotgun going to throw it. Down here, incomplete penalty marker flies. Intended for David Givens, Nick Harper was with him. Holding number 25 defense. Five yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Mike Vanderjad is saying the ball is uncatchable, but he's a kicker and nobody, nobody's listening to him. Well, it's really it's a little tangle tangling of the feet, but what about a decision from the Patriots in the shotgun? Hardly a, hardly a surrender to the ground game and then kick it away. Ball out to the 33 yard line, 318 on the clock. It gave you better field position, but the clock still is in the same predicament you were before. Brady and the Patriots go with five wide receivers. Blitz. Brady throws incomplete over through Dion Branch. Second and ten. Tom Brady has what he wants. Watch to the outside. Dion Branch, he's open, but the situation, worrying about the blitz, Brady has fallen away from the target, and that's what causes him to be offline with the throw. Second and ten, 314 to play. Quick pass out here, incomplete, third and ten. Boy, now you are given, well, you're putting yourself in a tough spot, and you're just giving the Colts all kinds of time. In fact, it's it's to the point where time might not even be a factor.
Tom Brady's not going to get this off. Well, they've just now started the play clock. Well, Brady. They, they reset it. And the Patriots are confused. They didn't know they were going to get the clock reset. And he calls timeout. That is the final timeout the New England Patriots had available. And it stops the clock with 312 to play here in the fourth. What's at stake? Oh. <laughs> Plenty at stake. In the AFC East, New England comes in with a 9 and 2 record. Should they fall, they'll be 9 and 3, and Miami travels to New England next Sunday with a shot at tying the Patriots for the top spot in the AFC East. In the South, Indianapolis trying to stay ahead of the Tennessee Titans. They each come into the action today at 9 and 2 and 3 and 1 within the division. Yeah, and there's even more than that, Greg. They both could still win their divisions. It could be the difference between playing at home through the playoffs, being the second seed where you still get a week off, or the third seed where you have to play the opening week. So, so much at stake in this last three minutes third and 13 Brady almost intercepted at midfield David Thornton had it and dropped it The Indianapolis Colts, their coaches are right next to us. The floor is shaking up here because they're hitting it after this drop pass by David Thornton. Tom Brady never saw him. Thornton had two interceptions in the last three games prior to today. Missed that one. Walter to kick. Kind of short. Bounces back. Back into New England territory. Let's go to the NFL today in New York for an update. Jim. All right, guys, thank you. Another thriller at Pittsburgh. Just 52 seconds after Heinz Ward put the Steelers in front. It's Kitna to Schobel. And the Bengals have the 24-20 lead with 13 seconds to play. Let's go back to you. John Kitten is making a lot of people around the league wonder why they didn't grab him when he was available. Well, yeah, why did the Seattle Seahawks ever get rid of him? And well, it doesn't matter anymore. He's taking advantage of a tremendous opportunity in Cincinnati. And how about Tony Dungy's decision? It works out even better than he could ever imagine. Ken, now you're going for the win. Ken Walters' punt was 18 yards. Manning now with a timeout remaining. On the move, throws out here, Edron James. James inside the 45 to the 43. 245 on the clock. It'll be second and five. Now, if you're playing defense, of course, you know the situation. It takes a touchdown to beat you. Welcome to those of you who are watching Buffalo and the New York Giants. Second and five for Peyton Manning here. The pass over the middle, and that's complete to the 30-yard line to Reggie Wayne. That'll be enough for a first down. Clock continues to move, 2.15. And there doesn't appear to be a hurry on the part of the Colts. Let's see if Manning gets a playoff before the two-minute warning. He does. Going to give it to Dominique Rhodes. Rhodes left side to the 21 yard line and that'll take us to the two minute warning which has 155 on the clock 38 34 New England we'll be back 
Welcome back to Indianapolis. Those of you who joined us late, the Patriots looked very much in control at 31 to 10. But then Tom Brady threw a couple of interceptions. There was a fumble. The Patriots began turning the ball over, and Peyton Manning was taking control and taking advantage. That pass to Marvin Harrison tied the game. It's a 38 34 lead right now for New England. A minute 55 to play. The Colts with the only timeout available to either side to give to Edron James. And James inside the 20. That's enough for a first down. First down Colts at the Patriots 18. And they still have one timeout left. No hurry. Manning, quick pass inside Marvin Harrison, changes direction to the 10, diving to the 9-yard line. Appears to be just short of a first down. Second and one. Remember, a field goal does the Colts no good. If you blitz and Marvin Harrison catches the ball, it's one-on-one -on -one trying to tackle him in the open field. Ty Law is limping. Willie McGinnis is limping off the field at the 30-yard line. And that stops the clock with 109 to play. A week ago, the Colts at Buffalo, a minute 38 left in the fourth. Edron James's one yard touchdown run gave the Colts a 17 14 lead. And then David Thornton intercepted Drew Bledsoe to seal the win. It was a come from behind win there. Tony Dungy hopes to see his club do the same here today. Now you know what's going on here is Tony Dungy and Peyton Manning are complaining about the injuries on defense saying come on they think they're faking to give them more time to rest up and get more strategy and this defense has been on the field a long time here in the fourth quarter. I think they've been on almost all the fourth for 17 plays to five would be my count but they're tired and I don't, I'm not saying the injuries are fake because I can't say that. There's nothing you can do if you're the Colts. But that's what Tony Dungy is arguing. Yeah. And the Patriots are out of timeouts. Hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. Take the time to strategize yourself and just figure out what you want to do. Willie McGinnis has been in there a long time. I've noticed he has been taking knees every time out. He's big. It's hot in here. Matt Chatham comes in to replace McGinnis, number 58. Second and one. Edron James, first down, inside the five to about the two. First and goal for the Colts. Payton's trying to hurry him up. He wants to get up there, get set, and they're going to run it again. James. Short of the end zone. 35 seconds on the clock. The Colts still have a timeout. Manny wants to run another play before he uses it. No touchdown signal. Manning wants a timeout. 18 seconds to play. It will be third and goal when we resume. Watch Big Ted Washington, number 92. You just can't move him. And that is one of the reasons why. And everybody, Teddy Bruschi, they play run all the way. And the Colts come up, it looks like about one foot short of the end zone. Worth noting, Willie McGinnis just trotted back onto the field. Now, you know, you say, what do the Colts do in a situation like this? Not too, not very seldom do you see him put in an extra runner or have a lead back. If they did something like that, I'd say they're going to fake it and throw the football. They're putting in a bigger wide receiver. Aaron Moorhead comes in.
Edron James with 139 total yards on his day. Would love to add one more. Third and goal. Manning throwing for Moorhead. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. That's tough. Tyrone Poole is practiced against Peyton Manning many times. Good technique. As soon as it's Aaron Moorhead takes off, he immediately is sinking fade himself and does a terrific job of stopping the play. This football game comes down to this play. Fourth and goal. Edger and James behind Manning. come up with the goal line stand 11 seconds to play and the ball goes over on downs Willie McGinnis is on the outside and I think he's unblocked they got more people on the line of scrimmage yes he's unblocked and he is in the stance he is playing run all the way Edron James might score by going over the top he can't even get up McGinnis makes the hit and there's a little celebration afterwards Over the last four minutes of play, the Colts got off nine offensive plays inside the Patriot 20-yard line and couldn't reach the end zone. Oh, boy. And look who is in the backfield again. Ted Washington again pushing the center of the line backwards, and that's the difference in the game. What a game. The New England Patriots prevail and survive 38 34 is the final score for Phil Sims and Armin Katayan. Greg Gumbel saying so long from the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. This was a classic. We invite you to stay tuned for game two of our doubleheader. And a reminder, you've been watching the NFL on CBS. Colts lose the battle of the nine and Should've twos. Ball, uh, hey, that, that smile is mistaken. Short, Tony Dungy and company are hurting after this loss. Bad decision there. But our guys overcame that, and they fought hard and uh, very proud of them. We got our work cut out now to regroup after this. Tough, tough loss, but we've got to come back and win a ball game next week uh, to get ourselves back in first place in the division. Well, you know, I thought we could tie the game up there. Potentially, we scored on a fourth down play, but it, it's going to be tough to score on fourth and goal from the 11. Um, the, the, if we had have gone for it and didn't make it, we had a chance to keep them down. But the way the game was going, they hadn't really tried to run the ball in the second half. We felt they were going to continue to try to throw to move the ball. That was their plan the whole game. We could force incomplete passes, get the ball back with a chance to win. And uh, we had that. Yeah, that's something we wanted to do. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't keep the ball in bounds there. None of them really, other than the, the kickoff at the end of the, the first half. Um, we ran plays that we run down there. Uh, they executed a little bit better than we did. Um, and they made the plays to win it. We call the plays, we call the plays that we, we like to call down there. And uh, you know, got the ball to the one yard line, just didn't quite get it in. Uh, the one thing you know, I was disappointed about, I talked to Bill Levy afterwards, he you know, told me that he was not going to start the clock because he gave them an extra time out. Uh, he wasn't going to wind the clock. And then afterwards told Peyton that he made a mistake and he was going to wind it. Uh, didn't really affect us. We only had two downs left, but uh, would have given us a little more time there. Uh, and that was disappointing. But uh, other than that, we called the plays we wanted to call. It's not, not very good uh, to, to give up 31 and the last time we were home, give up 38 here, uh, getting scores on big plays. Uh, you know, we play well in spurts. And, and when we had the energy of the crowd and we did some things, but very, very sporadic. And we've just got to play more consistent football. 
Well, that was a pucker factor of about 9.8 for Bill Belichick, but his Pats win, and he improves to 4-1 and one in his career against the Colts. That's what it was. How did it come about that you then sent him back in? Or? Well, a lot of times those things loosen up, yeah. <laughs> That, that a player's hurt. I mean, you got to get them off the field. I mean, you can't, what are you going to do? Run a play with them lying out there? I mean, you got to get them off the field. That's what they did. Can you break down how that play worked out with Willie if on the final play? Was his you know, I, I, yeah, there were so many guys in there, and I was standing so far away from a Tom. I really didn't get a, I didn't get a great look at it. I'm sure you guys saw it better than I did, so. Um, when did he go back in? Did he go back in for that last play, or was it a play before? Or? You know, I'm not sure. You know, we we're trying to get a call down there, and there were a lot of people in and out, so uh, I'm not sure. He seems to be playing this year in, in a, I suppose, a more limited role. He seems to be playing awfully well. Can you talk a little bit about oh, I think Willie, yeah, I think Willie's having a real, real good year for us, and, and uh, you know, it's so important for him to, uh, and Mike Vrabel and, and outside linebackers to kind of to set the edge on the perimeter of the defense and, and force the ball back inside where Washington and Seymour and those guys can, can make plays on it. So, um, you know, Willie's done a nice job rushing the passer, and you know, come up with some big plays in, in short yardage and goal line as well. You know, it's we, we've really emphasized our goal line defense uh, starting at the bye week. You know, we, we couldn't stop anybody the first half of the season, and, and we put a lot more, um, not that we weren't working on it before, but we put a lot more emphasis on it started at the bye week, and, and we got some big short yardage and goal line plays, um, and, and those were obviously very helpful for us. And, you know, we've been struggling a little bit offensively in the red area, and, and this was a, you know, a big red area week uh, in terms of, you know, running extra plays in practice and, and putting in extra meeting time and all that. And uh, so, you know, I was happy to see that pay off for us as well. But uh, those are two areas that, that we've really tried to improve since, since the middle of the season. And, uh, you know, it came up big for us today. All right, we'll hear from Willie McGinnis in just a minute. First, Vikings and Rams.